Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Uh, for uh, you Jet fans who have been under a rock for the last bunch of hours, I don't know if you know this, but of course, the uh, uh, just a quick update on the draft. The Jets took quarterback Geno Smith, correct? And uh, someone saw Mark Sanchez when he uh, saw this throwing his remote at the TV set, but it was intercepted. <laughs> 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 yeah. for, for lame bar, for lame bar joke material there. Uh, so, uh, any surprises this year in the draft that you saw, uh, David, as, as a fan or a guy who knows football? I don't know. It's, it's a, that big of a surprise. Everybody talked about how non deep this draft was for quarterbacks. It was, yeah. it was deep number wise, but no no big time superstars. But the, to have none of those guys go in the first round outside of um, EJ Manuel. EJ Manuel. Well, that's the State. thing. EJ Manuel. They probably could have gotten him as a third rounder, even. I mean, his grade was not 16th pick overall. Right. The thing, though, the thing, though, you, you, when you look at EJ Manuel, he's 6'5, yeah. he's 235 pounds. He's a big physical kid. He can throw the ball a he's long way. He's accurate, too. He's also brilliant. He's right. a smart, sharp kid, and he's, uh. he's a natural leader. He walks into the room, and guys gravitate towards him. So sometimes when you find a quarterback like that, and this is all eye of the beholder stuff, yeah. you know, yeah. so you fall in love with a kid like that where he's got the physical tools and he's got the personality and the intellect, you know, you take a chance and you, you want this guy to be a superstar. Why player. is it then that at Florida State, I mean, he, he there was the inconsistency. I mean, they were young teams, granted, but I, I just felt like he didn't play up to that potential at Florida State. And that's why it's the eye of the beholder. You know, yeah. is it is it because he didn't have enough guys around him? Is it because maybe the system didn't fit? Who, who knows why things don't happen? Yeah. I didn't study his film necessarily. We recruited him out of high school. Yeah. Uh, very bright, sharp kid um, with talent. So I'm sure up in Buffalo, they got a plan for him, and I'm excited yeah. for him. Well, you know, it's funny. It, th those are all good points you're bringing up. Everybody talks about how uh, athletes are changing, becoming supermen physically. Like, you get guys who are six... Uh, we talked about this one kid at Rutgers who was... Uh, and I just know Rutgers because it's local, and I follow the team, and I, and I like them, but uh, they had a wide receiver, 6'8", 240 pounds, uh, does Jeez. a 4'340". Uh, four, four, no. You know, uh, <laughs> something, really? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Wow. And uh, but, but also, besides that, education's getting better. People are starting to take the education part of it more seriously because of guys like you and, and other people and you're getting guys who are also the smartest players on the field uh, and the perfect example is Andrew Luck and RG3 those two guys last year those two guys are, are physically unbelievable you know and, and, and have all the tools but they also seem like at any given time the two smartest guys playing when you know the, the, the big dolt uh, quarterback from the south <laughs> like that, that old yeah. stereotype isn't there anymore they know football but they don't know anything else these guys coming up seem to know everything and it's unbelievable it's scary I, you know you know i i want to toot david's horn here he he coached That's the, the creepiest Luck. thing i've ever heard <laughs> <laughs> i thought i thought jerry sandusky did not rub on i i off. know i didn't think he did but somewhere in my subconscious uh no david i as a stanford fan as an alumnus uh i thought for sure once andrew luck left david had no chance as you know with that core group of kids you know yeah they're they're smart they're they're athletic they're hard-working guys they're willing to do what it takes to win but I just felt like you lose Andrew Luck what's gonna happen uh, he's such an amazing talent but such I mean, an amazing college athlete. you're gonna lose the guys once every four I know anyway. I know but I felt like Andrew Luck was the team but this year with Andrew Luck in the NFL David went and won the Rose Bowl Right with that group of kids, and he had uh, he had to change quarterbacks partway through the year because of terrible play. He would never say that, but uh, the, you know he went with a freshman. You got to make got to make tough tough decisions sometimes. I mean, uh, but yeah. the way that the way that you were able to manage the situation and win the Rose Bowl. I mean, for the first time since 1972, Stanford won the Rose. Is Bowl. that the That's ring? That's rare. That it, it is the ring. Can I can I see that real quick? Absolutely. <laughs> wow. As long as I get it back. The, uh, okay, no, no problem. I so <laughs> I mean, look like a criminal. I'll give it back. <laughs> I'm like running away with this. Like, look at this. My God. That is. You that's know, we're amazing. on we're on live HD. HD uh, direct TV right now. You don't know if I get to see that. Let, try to get a good shot of that. Look at that ring, man. That is sweet. That's a rose right here. The granddaddy oh, yeah. of them all. And, and you know, guys, and it was it was a phenomenal deal. And 
our guys had that chip on their shoulders. They wanted to show that they, they we were not a one man team. Yeah, that, that yeah we were, no, I mean, I'm sure it motivates. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now that, that reminds me, Keith Jackson. That's all I can think of when I hear Rose Bowl, the granddaddy. Uh, uh, he's a six five senior out of Pascana, Texas, two hundred and thirty eight pounds. He's got no handles on him, and he moves across the field about as smoothly as water running down a commode. You're looking live <laughs> behind the hills at the Rose Bowl, where the Michigan Wolverines will take on the USC Trojans in the fifty eighth granddaddy of them all, the Rose. Bowl. What does that spell? That spells bad news for the Wolverines. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a classic Keith Jackson opening. So Rose Bowl, your job is, it's insane the amount of levels you got to deal with, the amount of plates you got to keep spinning. You got the alumni, you got the parents of the players, you got the players themselves, you got to actually coach football. The academic side, uh, way more to me, a college coach has way more pressure on them and way more things to deal with than an NFL coach. Does it does it seem like that to you? I mean, there are a lot, a lot more facets, you know. And I love the NFL. Because they're kids, it's, you're, you're, it's all football. Know. Absolutely, yeah. these kids are still growing up. They right. still they make mistakes. You've got to have boundaries. Uh, the two biggest things for me are uh, number one, they're kind of the same thing, but it's hire great people and delegate. Right. I, I can't do you it all by good, myself. You need good people. You got to hire great people and delegate. And then secondly, you've got to recruit the kind of kids that you want to be around. Right. And you can't recruit some five-star big-time athlete <laughs> and and the kids a jackass. Yeah. You know, you, you got to have a kid that on, your, on your team that you know you can count on in the fourth quarter. Right. He's going to be a great teammate. He's going to be great in the locker room. That's what, how we have a chance to win. We got great guys on our team. See, I, I'm, I'm a guy who's a gambler. I like challenges. I am trying to succeed without good people. So I've hired bad people. <laughs> and I'm going to say, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, Mike, do you have any thoughts, any any questions about you're a big college football fan for David? Anything? No, I'm just listening to David talk. I mean, it, it's, it's great. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I, I just want to know, uh, as you look at as you look at David and you look at uh, Mike Borchetti and myself, can you believe the same God created us? <laughs> uh, we just we, we got to get some motivation. Some motivation, Mike. I know you have the chartreuse hair, but please. <laughs> Good. <laughs>